Hi everyone, I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and I'm joining you today to share a day in my life. I had a few people ask me to share what an average day looks like for a retired frugal person. And I live in the country, so mine might look different than someone else who lives in an area that is closer to the city. I'm an hour from the city both ways. So this is Maxi. He is one of our house cats and he has feline AIDS. Um, he has been fixed so he cannot spread it, but he isn't going to get much bigger than that. He's our baby and his life expectancy is shortened and we adopted him and he is so precious. So I spend some of my day playing with our animals. We have animals both inside and out and we have a donkey as several of you know and I've shown you in some of the videos. So I'm going to share with you what an average day looks like and through that I'm going to share with you some of my thought processes as I go through a retired frugal day of things that I think about that help save me money and things that I tweak along the way as I'm going through my day to fit into the lifestyle that I want. Now, right now, we have grandsons that are playing baseball, and we have two different ones playing, and we're at games four or five games a week. So we're really running to do that, which we enjoy very, very much. But all of those games are about an hour each way, so we have to add to our gas money for the summer to be able to accommodate that. And thankfully, we have saved, so we are able to do that. I always wanted to be one of those grandmothers that could go to my grandkids' games. So that's always been a goal of mine, and it's very important to me. So some of the things you'll see me do is in preparation to be able to go to those games in the evening. So let's get started. The first thing I do in the morning is I make my coffee and I've started using this little percolator as I've shared in a couple of my videos. It is electric and I found that I use less coffee by using this because our regular coffee maker, the smallest amount you can make is six cups but when I'm here by myself I'm not going to drink six cups so I can use the percolator and use less coffee to make my morning coffee. This is a Keurig maker, but I just don't use the Keurig part, except once in a while when we have guests and they want one cup of coffee. I do keep some extra ones for that that I catch on sale, but it's just too expensive to use a Keurig on a day-to-day -day basis. And when my husband and I use this, we also push the strong button. Let me know if you use that strong button and if you think it makes a difference. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. I think it's supposed to slow down how fast it percolates to make it stronger. But we do use that on the weekends when he's home and we can uh, make a bigger batch of coffee. But in the meantime, I just stick to the percolator to save money. Then I come over and do any dishes that I have left. I hand wash all of my dishes and I do those while the coffee is making in the morning. We do have some dishes left over from my husband from breakfast this morning. He makes his own breakfast every morning. And so I do those dishes once he has left for the day. I also fill up my water cup every day with ice and water so I'm not tempted to grab something else during the day. I also take this with me at all the ball games and I even keep a half of a gallon in my car so I can refill it with the ice that's in there if I run out because the ball game water is about $2 at one of the fields for a bottle of water and $6 at the other one. So today I've started by making a couple of chicken breasts ahead in the turkey roaster for us to have on hand for meals. I use the turkey roaster a lot because I don't want to heat up the whole house and I use it on the back porch here and keep the screen door open to help with heat. Sometimes I cook it outside on a little table, but today I didn't do that. And I just covered the chicken with salt 
And then some of the spice here. My son brought it home from Baltimore for us for a present. So we're trying that today to see how we like that. It's supposed to be a little spicy. So I'll have to let you know how that turns out. We have a new litter of baby kittens. And for some reason, the mother is wanting to keep them right here by our back door. And then I have some clothes I need to get down off of the line. Today was wash day. I finally had enough for a full load. So when I have a full load of either like towels or clothing, I will do a load. We do about two loads a week. And this is what I do when I'm worried I might run out of clothespins or just to make it easy. I just clip things together at the top. I don't know if everybody does that or not. Sometimes if I have a lot of socks and I run out of clothespins, I will double up socks if they're thin and hang them with one clothespin. But that's one of the ways that I not only save clothespins, I save a little bit of time. I hang everything upside down so that the clothespin marks don't show. And I fold my husband's jeans seam to seam and hang them like this without any pins and it comes out looking like they've been pretty much close to being pressed when I'm done. So they look really nice. So that's how I do those. One of the things that's frugal, but also has turned into a really fun hobby for me is gardening. And I'm really enjoying watching everything grow every day. I come out every day and check on all of my plants. I usually water in the evenings, but since I'm going to a game tonight, I watered this morning. But here is my lettuce that's doing really well. All kinds of little ones shooting up there. My potatoes are coming up nicely. We have some little green peppers that have started. Here's my tomato plants. I also have a couple of tomato plants here and a green pepper. I know I need to weed. Here's two of my celery that I grew from scraps. These are the ones that I harvested some off of the other day and I chopped and froze and I have some more on the inside that I have started that I will show you. Here's my green onions that I bought. Look how huge those are. And look how many of these green sprouts are just from each one. And these are so firm and crispy. And as we need onions, which I don't need right now, but as we need them, I will pull them, chop them, and freeze them. And that will keep us from buying onions all summer long. I have some eggplants growing here. Here's my cucumbers in bloom. They are so pretty. The flowers are so pretty. And I tried to make a little trellis here out of an old baby bed rail that I had that was broken. Uh, I, I just put it out yesterday, so I'm having trouble getting it to connect. It already was wanting to connect to everything it possibly could, including itself. I have three more cucumbers here, and I have a zucchini plant here, and if you can see in there, I have zucchinis growing already. My daughter's already picked five zucchini this year, so I guess I'm going a little bit slow, and we both planted at the same time. I have more green peppers coming up here. Another tomato plant. I have carrots. And so far, this is my only cabbage coming up. I've replanted some of these three times, and I'm just not having a ton of luck. So I have a sandbox here with sand from the river that we hauled in years ago. The kids don't really use the sandbox anymore when they come. They play with the animals. They play with the swing set. They play on the trampoline. So I decided to see if I could get something to grow in this. These are sweet potatoes right here in the middle. I grew those from my sweet potatoes that I got from the store that had some sprouts starting on them. I put them in water, let them take roots, and I planted them. And in my research, sweet potatoes will grow in sandy dirt. So um, it said sandy, well-drained dirt. So I'm trying my hand at sweet potatoes for the first time this year. These other little ones that you see are more potatoes 
that I've planted. I had some more that had sprouts and I save all of my sprouts. I save all of my seeds from anything that we eat and I just replant it. And if it grows, heck yeah. And if it doesn't, well, I didn't spend any money doing it. I have some more celery growing here and I have some little plants that I started on the inside, but I never do well, even though they tell you to start things like seeds on the inside, mine always grow up really spindly and just fall over. So I never do very well trying to start seeds. I had coffee for breakfast this morning, which is my normal routine. And for lunch, I just made myself a cheese and sweet onion quesadilla. Many times I just make super easy stuff like this that's very inexpensive for lunch. And it's about two o'clock right now and I am not even hungry yet, but I'm going to go ahead and eat this. So that's what I'm having today. One of those people who like to fold my clothes as I take them off of the line and that way they're already done and all I have to do is just hang the ones that need hung when I get back inside the house. And then I don't want to forget my clothespin bag. So I've never been one that's much for schedules at home. I know some people like a lot of schedules in their life, like certain days they do laundry, certain days they go shopping. And I think it comes from being an administrator for a nursing home most of my life. There was always cleaning schedules. There was always schedules for everything. And I wanted my home to feel more relaxed than that. I didn't want to be held to a certain day to do something. So I wash clothes when I get that full load when I need to. It's not on a certain day. I go shopping when I get enough items to go shopping. And I try to make it for a Tuesday or Wednesdays because those days are typically the cheapest days to shop where you can find the best deals. That's when the new weekly ads come out. And so those are the days that I normally try to go shopping. Now we were at a ball game again late last night and I needed milk. I needed just a couple of things and it wasn't really worth taking an extra day to go to town to do that shopping around the ball games. So while I was there, I just stopped at Walmart. That was the only grocery store in that town. I'm not really a Walmart shopper, but since I was already there and I knew it would be more expensive to choose another day and drive to Aldi, which is where I usually shop, I went ahead and went into Walmart. I did see uh, that a frozen pizza that I will buy from time to time for myself and split that up into three meals when I'm home had raised 50 cents. I was able to find a three pack of macaroni and cheese. I normally don't buy this. In fact, I don't, can't even remember the last time that I had macaroni and cheese with one of those squeeze packs in it, but it was on the clearance rack for $5.40 for three of them, which made it a good deal. I can split this up into three meals at home during the day when I'm here by myself and make it to be a pretty cheap meal. I could even add peas, which I love peas. So I look for things like that when I'm out and about. If I'm going to grab a thing or two and I find a good deal like that, I go ahead and grab that. I did grab some oyster crackers, which were very comparable to the Aldi price. The milk was a little more expensive than Aldi, of course. I have gone to like the 1% or the skim milk. Uh, my husband really doesn't drink milk and I don't really need the extra calories. Um, and when I make my homemade iced coffees, I don't want them as rich as like a whole milk or a 2% milk will make them when I add the milk. So I kind of like having the thinner milk in that. Um, I did get some peanut butter for my husband, which also the great value was comparable to the Aldi price. I was surprised about that. Um, I did get some bananas. I can get those cheaper at Sam's Club, but you do have to make a separate trip and I haven't been around Sam's to get any bananas, but they usually run about 10 cents less a pound there. I do try to pick my bananas in a bunch that has the most servings. So I'm looking at, is there eight bananas for that price or is there 10 bananas for that price at Sam's Club? And I know the peel goes into that, but I'm looking at how many servings I can get 
from a bunch of bananas more than the weight. And then I look at the cost per pound. So I normally do get them at Sam's Club, but I did pick up a few last night at 58 cents a pound. Um, and then I also picked up a head of cabbage at 68 cents a pound. My husband has been chopping up cabbage, mixing it with ground pork that we buy and adding some liquid aminos to that and taking that for his lunches. And he really enjoys that. And he's one of those people that like to eat the same thing every day. He's not bothered by that. So he's been on this kick of eating that for a while. So I picked up some more cabbage that we will chop up for that. And then I did get a five pound bag of potatoes for $3.12. He's on a special diet where he's trying to cut back his carbs and such right now. He already can't eat gluten. So we're not going through very many potatoes. And now we just finally need another five pound bag. So that's all I purchased. I only spent $30.77 at Walmart last night. And that will keep me from having to go to the grocery store for at least another week. Those are some of the things I try to do to save money. I just try to fill in those blanks when I'm shopping. If I can see something that's a good deal, I'll grab it. But otherwise, I just fill in those blanks with some of those items that we desperately need. I compare the cost. I grab them. I bring them home. And then... I don't have to leave the house again to do something like that. Um, in fact, a lot of days I don't leave the house and I'm perfectly content with that. In fact, some days I'm like, man, I got to go somewhere today. I don't mind going to the grandkids ball games. So I enjoy that. And my friend and I are actually going to a water park on Friday. So we will be doing that. It costs $5.25 for me to get in. She's a senior, so it costs her $4. We have been one other time since I've been home. I am missing that Texas pool a lot, but I will be doing that on Friday. So I do a lot of fun things mixed in during my weeks. And I don't just stay home all of the time. But when I leave, I have a purpose. It's not just like I'm going to just see what there is to do, see what there is to buy, look for specials. I don't, I don't enjoy doing things like that. So I have a purpose when I leave and then I do that purpose and I come home. I'm not really the wandering around type to look for something else to do to entertain myself. I feel like I can entertain myself better at home. I really enjoy it here. I have done things in the house and decluttered them and made them comfortable where home is truly my oasis and I love being here. I did go ahead and add peas to one of those boxes of macaroni and cheese, which made it into three meals for me this week. I thought that was a pretty good deal. I've got six more servings out of the other two boxes. All I did was add a can of peas that I got from Aldi's. So yeah, I made nine meals out of not very much. And these are some of the things I do when I'm at home during the day to make my money stretch. Just in time for the chicken to be done. So I just mowed a path up to the cabin. It would be impossible to show you everything that I do in a day because every day is different here on the farm. But I'm glad that you joined me today. I hope that this video was inspiring and entertaining for you. And I hope to see you in the next video.